In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father. Thank you, Lord, for this day, for this time, for this time of fellowship. Thank you, Lord, for all the sisters and Brother Vincent here. Thank you for Sister Marlene, who is going to share the word with us. Everything that she's going to speak is all from you, Lord, not from her. Let the fire and the anointing of your Holy Spirit be upon her as she speaks. And take control of her tongue, Lord, because every word is sharper than a double-edged sword. It cuts to the bone and even the marrow. And your word does not go void or empty. It comes to bear fruit. We thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you for each and every one of us, Lord, that we fellowship at a time and we are walking by faith and not by sight. We are believers, we are born again, and we believe in the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus. We thank you, we praise you, we glorify you. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Praise God. Praise God. So amen. over to you, Sister Marlene. Praise God. Thank you, brother. Actually, I, was, I had such a big, busy way that I didn't even, you know, get into a proper, you know, uh, topic to see what I could. But then I still said I will still do it with my journey. <laughs> with Praise Jesus. God. Praise God. And then, you know, I thought, as you said, that this is not preaching or teaching. It's just sharing what you know, we have learned from our own experiences and Beautiful. getting closer to know him. So I said, yeah, I'll just speak about um, what, how I got closer to my Lord. And I'll share this with everybody, uh, how I feel today about it. And Beautiful. the topic Beautiful. I chose. Uh, yeah. And the talk. Thanks, brother. The topic I chose is hope. Praise God. And. The re and um, the reason it's I chose this is because uh, every morning, even before I put my foot down on the floor, I say to him, Father, I rise before dawn and I cry for help. I have put my hope in your word. Praise God. Praise God. This scripture, which holds around me and gets me through the day because it makes me fail. It takes me from one scripture to the other when I face whatever I come across during the day. Like, you know, in Romans um, 15, 13, um, how it says that God of hope fills you with joy and peace, believing, you know, and, and he... The, the abundance, the, the abound love and hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I just, I just feel it, brother. I just, I, I hear it when I speak to him. And then, you know, every situation that comes my way, it just flows through me. So hope, I feel that hope in God, if we don't have, we can, we cannot, we cannot survive because Absolutely. we all know, I mean, we are all worries. We know what hope is. And having hope in God, and it helps, it helps me through the day by, you know, my discernment levels are low if it, it's not there. And I'm reacting to people and situation from a carnal standpoint, you know, instead of, you know, let go and let God handle this, it becomes, you know, a, a bigger issue if I'm not fed with the spirit, uh, meaning there's more room to consume ungodly things of this world. So it, it really, when it comes to hope, I, I, I just put my whole self into that strength. Hope in God's word encourages us to strengthen our heart. Yes. So... It is about us. It, actually, it's in, what I wanted to say was it's not all about us and our hope. We have hope in God. We know God. We have been we have been drawn closer to Him by by studying the Scriptures, learning, and we know how much we need Him in our daily life. But it is about 
taking this hope to people who feel hopeless. Amen. Amen. And there are people among us, friends, families, extended families, strangers, we don't know, are facing various kinds of uh, tribulation, terminus illness, like, you know, um, homelessness, um, and various different circumstances, which leads to depression. And this is my goal. That's, that's, that's the hope, that, you know, that's what Jesus says, like, you know, we got to be fishers of men. And that is, you know, not going to the sand, like, you know, Brother, uh, Brother Johnson normally says this, that don't go to the aquarium and fish the same fish or go to the same pond. It, that's, that's the hope that I have, that I need to go out there where people really need the hope that God has given us. And, and I am going to say how I am up among these people here, like daily, in my daily life when I speak to every other person at work or when I'm traveling or when some each one has got their problems and and when they speak it's all about you know how they are leading their lives but when you tell them that you know there is hope their hope compared to my hope is very far and different their hope is yes i will get this it's i will get what i want but when you tell them where it's coming from or oh, i'm going to get this job or you know i'm going to you know build this house or whatever whatever, whatever. it's more it's of wishful thinking uh -huh. it doesn't come from god and that's that's quite like you know distressing to hear that you want to take jesus to them and I'm going to talk about actually a friend and I'm going to keep the name Elias and how I have been connected to, to this person. It's especially, you know, I know around the world when, when you talk to people, it, it is our duty, you know, uh, we know that it's not them it's it's according to john 10 10 you know it's it's the it's the site and that's you know in their life come to steal kill and destroy so we feel hope when when we when we see them we feel for them but before we go there we need we need to prepare ourselves for the worst because when we go to these people who don't know god we have to be prepared to to take in you know to take in whatever they say so you know you have to be prepared to sort of you know be transformed and renew your mind to you know if they slap you give them the other cheek but you know still continue you know because especially in the in the western countries and especially where i live in in, in Australia, when you talk to people, they've got referendums about, you know, same-sex marriage, and they believe in that, they hope that that will get through, and all of that sort of things, they, they've got different, different, you know, political things, but when it, when it comes to God, that is their last priority, the reason I'm saying this is, if we made God the first priority, it changes your whole life, because I, that is how I do it because I study and I think, what does it mean? Like what every time I look at the Bible, it makes sense to me. Like, you know, yeah, I, I need to do this. So um, I was going to just talk about someone whom I knew and I'm going to keep this name alias, even though some men or some men don't know. I'm going to call the person say, Chelsea it's just, it's just a football team <laughs> so I met this person in 2006 and a very happy lovely lady had a job was doing well was living in the in the middle of you know the city in Perth and was really really doing good I then met her in 2010 and she was um and she i mean we were working together she left the job and then i met her four years later 
she was a different person, a lonely, divorced, um, had some business vending machines and, you know, so at that time in 2010, I was not in the world. So the conversation was all about what was going around her. And it was quite, um, you know, how we, how, although I wanted to help her, it wasn't really, the, I wasn't really there because I, obviously I wasn't in the world, but I, I was really felt that she needs help. So at that time, the only direction we could give us, oh, you need counseling, you need to talk to somebody and things like that. Again, a couple of years later, um, I met her again, and then she was with someone, she had a partner, still didn't look very content, and she was going downhill. So this, then I was like, you know, what is she doing about herself? But then again, we separated, and then in 2018, um, I, met her again in a different place. And the, here she was single, very disturbed, lost, and not only lost all her possessions, um, she had, she was totally sort of, you know, um, in total depression. But by that time, I, I actually got into the world in 2017 myself. And whatever little I knew, I tried to explain and I said, you'll get some sort of pace. And I was like, you know, gave her Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28. And I said, this is what Jesus is saying. Come and he will give you rest, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, she heard me, but I didn't feel that she had any sort of, you know, uh, interest in pursuing it so she was like yes I know I have God a lot of people say that I have God but do they really have God do they really look into it so this was playing in my mind that if I have to do what the Lord wants me to do this is something that I have and I should mm -hmm. continue with it I shouldn't because she can't see what I can see. And I know that she's being disturbed, not by what, because her aim was, she's, going, she's got a hope of you know, destroying the people who destroyed her, the hope of you know, fighting her case and all of these. And I kept saying her, all of these can only happen if you have God in your life. She also got angry with me at times. But then I said, I'm not going to stop here. I would still every day, every morning, like I would send her, you know, some sort of advice and a scripture with it. So one day she comes back to me. This was in 2019. And while we were talking, she asks me, do you have a Bible? And that was like a shock. The person who doesn't want to listen, which means it's working, but it's, it's very slow. So I said, I, I showed her the different, and I thought she wants just a small Bible to read. She said, oh, this, this is too tiny, I can't read. So I got, went to my mom and I got her a bigger one, which with, with big, bigger paint, and I gave it to her. She took it, and then she comes back to me. She said, I feel I'm a lot better, but you know, the thing is, you can read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, but you need to know what it means. You need someone to, you know, make, make you feel what, how it comforts you. Because Bible is a communication with God and us. Every question we have, the answer is there. But how is actually looking to, at it in, from that point? So people think, oh, I have the Bible. Oh, God's with me. I've done sometimes she, I mean, I have even had people saying, Oh, I go to church, I pray, I do all of this, and you know, that's it. But it's not a duty, it's a relationship. And that's how, like every day, understanding if I if I have to do something, I will first call out to him. I will, you know, I will I will look 
look to hear his voice sort of you know the other day i had i i had my boss call him, call me in to the office and i'm saying and suddenly i'm saying what do i say now what's happening and automatically this scripture comes to my mind and exodus 33:14 and i say to the lord lord your presence will go with me whatever may be and God. when i when i say scriptures it automatically i feel the presence i can hear his voice and then i get you know it takes me to the next level of what i should do so same way i was trying to to sort of you know help chelsea out in her um you know her, her whatever mental health she is going through because she looked totally different entangled and you know not only her mental health but physical health was going down as well and then um i actually felt like you know she needs she needs support so but how why i'm saying this is how the devil works inside people the moment i give her the word she she takes it but suddenly she says she brings in all these different things that the you know the word talks about do you know that this is what um you know jeff this said that you know there will be an earthquake there will be an so i would like yes so and then she, i said but before that god has already said what what is going to happen and you know we we talk get this conversation up and re- most recently it was this year i mean i have I've, since 2019 i've been meeting this friend constantly to get her out of her situation because i want that she should you know <clears throat> come out of that and accept jesus as her lord her savior her messiah and i know that she be, because every time i i pray she, it comes to my mind that she needs god so i just keep kept talking to her and but it is sometimes so difficult for for us to take for us to take the words to unbelievers but it's the it's a thing is that we should never give up it's it's going to happen and as i said like continuously being with her most recently she also you know i think she is she is got a severe mental health issues she sends me a mess- message and i and i said uh, and says to me that i have put a restraining order for some friends like she's trying to prosecute me and better be careful because your you're sending me all these words it's upsetting me word of god upsetting a person it was like uh, as soon as i got that it was like praise god she's reading it and yes the devil is working in there so i said lord she doesn't know what she says i do forgive her because she can't do much when your hands are upon me what can she do so i was like you know i just offered it and i prayed and i said she needs you and i kept praying and then it was about 3 weeks later she sent me an apology i didn't know what what was going on i just said this but i know that you're trying to but it's not working and you know so i'm still in this journey it's not that i got her 100% but she comes in and out it's like you know how we say the sun and it's just you know it's it goes into the rocky soil and all of that is but i know and i know that this journey with her makes me go back to the scriptures to read to study and to take the word to her to say exactly what i need to at when and how so it 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 really helps me understand how hope works in each one's life like you know in titus 2:13 it says like this hope see us through the storms and tests of life it's not only a storm for her it's it is a different storm for her 
but it's a different storm for me. My storm is I, I need to get her into the kingdom. And hers is like, do I believe in what I say to her? So it, it's this, this scripture, every time I talk to her, I, I just continue to tell her this is how it is going to be. So that is one part of my story of how I'm getting closer to God because this person, he has actually put her in my life to get him know, to get me know God more because it, that, he draws me closer to him by just me studying the scripture so that I can go back to her and say, look, this is what the scripture says, hold, love him, love him. But if a person has lost all hope, from where will they get that love? But it's, it's sort of disappeared. And that's, that's when I told her, Jesus is the answer. He is the hope. He took our sins, I told her that, you know, and so that we have a relationship with God. He's restored our relationship. And that's what made me understand that my relationship is restored to God because this is, this is a renewed relationship that I get from Jesus, the hope. And God. I God. came to that. Jesus. I, came, I, I come that he, Jesus said that I come that they might have life. I'm, I'm, I know these words, but I don't know the scripture. And this is what I used to tell her that, you know, we have, and I mean, I know the word, it says, I come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. So this, this is what ne we need to understand that he is our good shepherd. He gives us life. And how people destroy their life by what what they what they believe in and what they they want. Now this person had everything, everything. She it was she was content, but the eager of having more not only led to led her to divorce, a lonely life, and disturbed and you know losing everything and people have taken her to court and now she stands with nothing but mental health and physical issues so yeah i just wanted to say how eager i am to get this person out of her situation you know, Sister Marlene, you can just Sorry. for her. Brother, have you got any suggestion? No, Sister Marlene, you know what you're, what you're just sharing right now is something... I can't so, hear you. You know what you're sharing right now? Are you with me? Yeah. Can you hear me? No, I, I, I don't know. For some reason, I can't hear you. Is, I is put everyone, my thing is a bit everyone able to, Is everyone able One to minute, brother. Me? I'll just put my... No, I, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What I was saying, Sister Marlene, okay, let her come yeah. back. Yeah, what I was saying is, what you have just shared to us just now is something so practical, so real, something which is, which is an everyday story, you know? It's not something that you're sharing with us which is, which is irrelevant. You know, many a times, people come into our lives where they have an issue, they have a problem, there are uh, uh, you know, opportunities for us to reach out to people. But even though you may reach out to people, you may, even though you may, you may want to give them the hope that you and I have in Christ Jesus, it doesn't necessarily always mean that because you're going and giving them the good news, they are just going to take it with and grab that opportunity. It doesn't happen. No one takes that opportunity and grabs it. But you know what? Even if they don't grab that opportunity, that is the only opportunity or that is the only solution they have in Christ Jesus. Because if they ever think that there could be an alternative to Christ, 
they are going to be deceived. Yeah. Amen. Think about it. I mean, you know, if, if you really go to the scripture, especially if you go to, you know, the scripture where Jesus talks about, you know, being the way, the truth and the life. Look, look at the scripture. I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, you know, add on to what, um, you know, Sister Marlene was sharing. Look at what Jesus says in John 14 verse, uh, John 14 verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Amen. So when we understand this, that there is, Jesus never said, I am a way, a truth, a life. There is, there is no alternative. The only, the only solution for us, the only way to come to God for us is through the blood of Jesus. And even we, and the sooner we understand this truth and the sooner we understand that only Jesus can, you know, put our life in order. He can give our lives meaning. He can give our lives significance. He can give us, you know, that eternal life that, that, that he has promised us, a relationship with God, which will, you know, reflect in our relationship on, on the horizontal. And of course, you know, what you mentioned, Sister Marlene, in John 10, 10, he will also give us that eternal and that abundant life. This is the life that we are called to give. I mean, because we are Christian doesn't mean that, you know, we live in, you know, in despair here on this earth, just waiting for heaven to come. We are going to live a life of abundance here on earth. And therefore, when we begin to understand everything with respect to Christ as our hope, you know, things begin to change. Things simply begin to change. Things simply begin yeah. to change. And you know, without Christ, I mean, now you now now now, now the Chelsea, whatever Eli, Elias, you took her name, whatever she, whoever she is. You know, when you mm. begin to look at this Chelsea as a person who is who, who really needs help, and you are going there with the only help available for her, and that is Jesus Christ. And even though you have gone there with Christ, you have gone there, you know trying to, you know, give her that solution and yet you find she is, she's basically persecuting you, she wants to, you know, complain against you and then finally you said she apologized for all that and she's still not there yet. You know, my sister Marlene, I want to give you some good news as well. You know, the word of God when you preach it, or the word of God when you share it, it is a seed. It is a seed. It may not sprout and bring a harvest next day Maybe after a week, but it is a seed. That seed has been planted and God who is faithful to his word will sprout that seed and bring the harvest in our life. That is for sure. You can't do. You and I can't do the job of the Holy Spirit, but we can do the job of a good farmer of sowing that seed in somebody's life. Praise God. God is faithful to his word. The Holy Spirit will take over. We don't know when, whether she's 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 ready to, you know, uh, you know, bring the harvest of that seed. We don't know that, but the Holy Spirit knows you have done your job of introducing the hope that you have in Christ, that through that hope she has in Christ herself, she not only will come out of a problem, but she will begin to experience eternal life. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I have that hope too, uh, brother, but it's just that, you know, when she hears it, it, she does accept it, but the way she's being destroyed by the evil one, that mm. the moment she's not in my presence, she's gone out. She's, she's looking at the TV, getting all those news. As I said, like, you know, she's talking about science and she's talk, talking about, you know, uh, climate change and all of that not knowing that that is not what is going to change her life. Correct, correct, correct. And, and you know, very... Whenever a person is going to drift away and, you know, going to basically come to a stage where, you know, they're going to get focused on climate change and focused on all these things, you know, that are around them, you know, it's not going to be something that's going to be easy for anyone to minister to that person. You have to just be patient you know, yeah. I always say that if God has been patient with me for so many years, how can we try to be impatient with a fellow mortal 
who you know is just trying to you know get a feel of that word you know which you have planted so again you know your uh, sister malin you have done your job of planting that seed you have planted the word of god in her life and i believe the holy spirit will do the rest i really believe that okay. yes thank you yes radha i i believe that also because that's what i look at in fifth in romans 15 13 i think the holy spirit the power of the holy spirit will lead me to what absolutely you know, absolutely absolutely and uh, yeah so that that's what i wanted to share it's, as you said like it's not tasting i'm just sharing how i am trying to get to do what i want to do and and there are the it's not only her i've got a few others like that lined up as i said it's not easy in this country i know that you know in asian countries and other countries you there are people who believe in god but when it when you go to an unbeliever although they are struggling although they they are accepting their struggle their depression the life that they are in but they're not accepting god that is mm-hmm. the biggest pain because you know it, it it hurts that there's there's there is hope there's help out there and they're just rejecting it and it's so true that it's written that not everyone is going if they have to be those chosen ones i understand that but you know how do because the 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 word has to be preached from the east to west as we know but it's just like why are they so much in unbelief why are these i know these countries these western countries not really you know into that the other day in two days back there you know the australian government changed like you know from from the liberal they changed to i don't know if you know about it yeah and yeah, yeah. Very, we were we were just talking about i think we were talking about it going to the elections but by the time we came back to this class you already <laughs> have a new government oh yeah okay so you know about it and on wednesday we have a program called project and it's not that i still didn't watch it but i just passed by and i heard hear this person and the presenter say oh all these people the new politicians are going to swear by the bible they take the bible and they will say uh, i mean they get sworn in as you know each one and they're going to now change the life because the bible is going to change the life i said what is why is he talking like that you know it, if they they are doing it for a reason whatever reason but uh, i still feel if that's if that's how they look at the bible they shouldn't even have that custom it should be like you know there's no necessity of it if because if he's speaking like that even those people who are swearing on do they know what they're swearing on and what are they taking on them because first of all swearing itself is not correct you know it you know it, as as we know that we shouldn't be swearing on anything it either should be yes or a no right. but they're doing right. that and and then to to add insult to injury this guy goes and broadcasts it on an, on on the program saying or oh, they all getting sworn in now god is going to look after this country he's already looking after this country that they don't know see you, you, you know you know what sister malin what you just said he's already looking over the country is is only because of this word hope you know if we, if we really begin to understand that god doesn't want anyone to be lost he knows he knows one thing that you know people he has never created to go to hell he made hell only for the devil and therefore he never created man to go to hell but the the real issue here is that many people many people haven't understood that their only hope is jesus christ and the day they begin to understand that their only hope is jesus christ they will come to christ they will develop faith in him and they will be saved not only saved and enjoy a great life here on earth but also saved for all eternity so when you said you know that he's already watching over australia or watching over the world and he's watching over the countries that particular watching is he's watching it with you know 
God always looks forward with hope. God is not someone, you know, who wants anyone to be destroyed. God wants, he has given us the free will. You know, God is a gentleman. If only we could think that, you know, uh, like for example, a parent, you know, if there's a small child of theirs, we simply beat the child or probably punish the child and keep the child from, you know, its, uh, its privileges or whatever. But God in the new covenant is not going to basically sit with a, like, a, like a policeman and, you know, hold us and, you know, he's going to only give us his love. He's only want us uh, to have that revelation of his love. And what you shared today, you know, about hope is exactly what we had based on which we came to the Lord. If, you know, if a person is hopeless, there is no way they will ever come to Christ. You know, I'm, I want to just share with you a testimony because you know what? This testimony will help you to understand what hope can do. You know, it was about three years ago, you know, I was on a mission to, uh, in Malaysia. And you know, as usual in between the break, you know, for this, uh, these missions, they always want us to go and pray over somebody in the hospital. You know, so we used to go for a hospital visit. And we went to this particular uh, family where the husband, they were Korean, you know, Korean or Chinese, or I don't know, maybe Chinese. And the husband was having a cancer. We went to pray over him and he refused to even turn his face and look at us. Because the doctors had told him he's got very little time to live. You know, he, he had already lost hope. He was absolutely depressed. He was dejected and we came there to, just to share the word with him and also to pray over him. And as, you know, as I began to open my mouth and start sharing with him, I observed for the next, for about three, four minutes, he was absolutely not responding. He wasn't responding. He was, he was just turning his back with his back towards us. We are talking to him. If we turn to him, he turned against us. And literally, we could realize he was saying to us, I am not interested. Are you, are you, are, can, you, can, you can you relate to what I'm saying? Yeah, the I'm body not, language. Yeah, I'm not interested. And you know, his wife was there, his son was there. They, were, they, 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 they just hoped that you know, something would get across. And within three, four minutes, the Holy Spirit told me, stop sharing the word and only start sharing on the love of God. Just start sharing on the love of God. And as I began to share with him the love of God, began to share him what God did on the cross, how Jesus took our place, and how, you know, he became our substitute. This man turned his face and started listening to me. For four or five minutes, he did not want to hear me share anything. But the moment I began to share the love of God, he was alert, he was listening, and I went on for, I think, almost about 45 minutes just talking to him. His wife was there, his son was there, he was there, I had another somebody else with me, and I began to share the love of God. And my brothers and sisters, at, after 45 minutes of sharing the love of God, which he was listening now, you know, this man had pipes in him. He wasn't getting up on the bed. He was just, you know, hopeless in the bed. After he heard, he opened his mouth and he says, please continue. I want to hear more. So I went on for about 45 minutes to one hour. And at the end of 45 minutes to one hour, looking at his expression on his face, looking that he was listening, that hope he received because of God's unconditional love, because he understood what Jesus did. You know, he was in a hopeless state, but God's love turned him from a hopeless stage into a stage of hope. Amen, amen, amen. Please understand this. The man was hopeless. He was not interested. He was ready to die. He was just waiting for death to come. But this very man, when he heard about the love of God being preached to him, from a state of hopelessness, he came to a stage of hope. Not yet in faith. When he came to a stage of hope in about 45 minutes to one hour, now I began to ask him. I said, Jesus has healed you on the cross. He's taken your cancer on the cross. He has destroyed your cancer. Even before you were born, he bore your cancer on the cross. And the word of God says, he carried all our infirmity. 
Now he's paying full attention. Now from hopelessness, he's gone to hope. And from hope, he's come to faith now. Mm. Because he's got the word. So now that he was in faith, he nodded, we prayed. And you know, my dear sisters, this very man who was not even ready to turn his face and look at us, he got out from the bed and he walked almost about 50 meters and came back to the bed. Hallelujah. Really? He walked 50, but he walked out of his room along with all those pipes. They began to catch his pipe, you know, because he had pipes all, you know, drips and all over. We were holding, one of us was holding that, uh, that, that, that holder and he began to walk with those pipes. He walked about 50 meters and he came back because suddenly from a hopeless stage, he was not only in hope, but now he was in faith. And when we left that place, we were simply celebrating what the Lord had done. Amen. What the Lord had done. So, you know, my dear sister Marlene, let me tell you one thing. You have sown that seed. Yes, you did not probably get a good response. You never got probably a thank you. On the contrary, you probably got brickbacks on you. You got some complaints against you. You got somebody, you know, complaining and probably, you know, ready to take action against you. And finally, you know, the person said, I'm apologizing. And you know at this very stage that, yep. you know, she has not reached the finishing line. She's, the, the person has still not come into hope or maybe in hope but not come to faith. But don't you quit. Don't you quit. Just keep, keep giving her the love of God. Keep sharing the love of God. Continue to you know, call her and don't talk to her about the word and say, are you listening? Are you hearing the word? Are you doing this? Just share the love of God with her. Just tell her Jesus loves yes. you. Just tell her that, you know, God loves you. I was, I'm praying for you. Today I was, I was inspired to call you. This particular thing is going to turn that hopeless situation and torture that enemy that is disturbing her and bring us to a stage of hope first before she can go to the next level of faith and see yep. the glory yep. and see the abundant life that we talked about in John 10, 10 in her life as well. Yep. Yes, brother, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm not, I don't give her many scriptures. I invite her, I give her a mail and I talk to her. I listen to her. Yeah. I try to, because Paul in one of the scriptures says that we need to get down to their level to understand what they want and speak their language. Exactly. He says, I become all things okay. to all men so that I can win them over to Christ. Correct. Yep. Right. Yep. That's the scripture. So I practice that a lot because... I know if I don't speak their language, I'm not, they're not going to listen to me. It's my, I, it's my hope that, you know, I can see her going downhill. Tomorrow, I just don't want to hear that she's committed suicide because I can see her, that stage. And it's just, just because of that, I said, I have to share this, but I'm doing my very best to get this person out of her depression. I've been even told, why are you, my, my other friends, why are you bothered? You don't know. She's doing this, she's doing that. But I know she's not doing in her own senses <laughs> because we are all children of God and he hasn't he given us, you know, a, anyone that kind of, you know, um, uh, spirit that they would kill themselves. It's not them. It's the it's we know the evil is in her, but it's just getting around that is was it's so difficult. And as I said, like when she's with me, she's a different person. But when she's away from me, she sends me messages that is so just opposite. It's, it's like, <laughs> you know, just just hold on, hold on to the word and just believe that, you know what, if God has connected you to this person, remember there is a reason for that. Mm. Yep. Hold on to the word. You hold on to what God has given you as far as she's concerned. Like you are a mentor to her. But not all mentors are going to see instant results. Not all mentors. For example, yep. you think that when, when Paul had Timothy, do you think when Paul had Silas, all these guys who were mentors, did they all become, you know, did they take Paul as their mentor immediately? No, there were struggles. There were difficulties. But once they be, Paul became their mentor, these men became great men of God. So in the same way, this sister, Chelsea, she also can become a great woman of God, provided you don't you quit, you know, believing God for what he has started in your life for her. And as you begin to, you know, just share the love of God, just continue to encourage her, continue, you know, to pray for her, continue to intercede for her. 
I'm sure she's going to be a great woman of God without a doubt in my life. In, you know, yes, God, I, don't, I, I don't believe, believe that. that. I, I really don't believe that God is going to fail that or there's going to be any failure. Definitely there's going to be great success. Yes. Amen. I, I Amen. believe, I see in that unseen that one day she's preaching to me. I just, I just, you know, imagine that. And that's my imagination that she's sitting with the Bible and preaching to me. And that's what I'm going to see. <laughs> You know, I, I'm just going to I'm just going to put you one 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 verse. I just remembered this verse, uh, Colossians chapter one. I believe it is verse number twenty seven, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, look at this verse twenty seven. It says, "To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles." which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Glory. Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You know, you know, you know, when we, when we begin to realize now the new covenant, that we have God Almighty living on the inside of us. To our new birth, we have God Almighty living inside of us. You know, this was not a reality in the old covenant. In the old covenant, they had a temple, they had a tabernacle. They would, you know, the, the priest would go and perform all that, you know, the, 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 the blood of the, of, the, of the animals. But today, in the new covenant, we ourselves are the tabernacles of the Most High. We are the temples of the Holy Spirit. We have Christ inside of us. This is the hope of glory for us. And now, that because we have Christ on the inside of us, you and I are reaching out to people who have still not experienced this this hope of glory, this presence of Christ. So all that we need to do is simply, simply, patiently feed, feed the land, you know, feed the sheep, feed whoever is coming into our life with God's word and with God's love. And that hope of glory will surely be revealed one day because God is faithful to his word. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. So thank you, Sister Marlene, for sharing with us that. That was a wonderful topic about hope. But you know what? It, when we talk about hope, we can, we can, we can only have wishful thinking without, without Christ. You know, we, many times we say hope, hope, hope. And you can live yes. in hope and die in despair, literally, as sometimes we say. <laughs> but when you yes. have Christ, when you tie your hope to Christ, because Christ is the one who will bring you from a hopeless state to state of hope, and then he gives you his faith, and it takes you on an awesome journey of living an abundant life, eternal life, and a relationship with God. But that will only happen when our hope is tied up to the promise of God. Our hope is tied up to the word of God. Our hope is tied up to something which is like a, a sure anchor. You know, Jesus Christ is our sure anchor. So our hope must be tied up to the word, to the promise. And when it's tied up to the promise, we know and we know that when we hold on to Christ, he is definitely going to see us to the finishing line. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. You know, Sister Marlene, you are the perfect laborer for her. So the Lord will work through you. Yes, Sister. I believe that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Praise God. And you know, I, I don't believe that, you know, we are just laborers to somebody by accident. We are not laborers to people who come into our life by accident. God loves everybody. Even though we may be a laborer to somebody, remember, somebody, we are, we are um, you know, somebody is a laborer to us as well. And who's that? Who's that? The Holy Spirit. Oh, he's, he's, he's constantly with us. He's constantly teaching us. He's constantly directing us because he wants everybody to come under the headship of Christ. You know, we may be laborers to somebody, but we can't be laborers to somebody all their life. We have to hand over those people over to the Holy Spirit so that they now are led by the Holy Spirit to a different level because he only can take us to a different level. So maybe in the beginning, somebody was a laborer. I was, uh, somebody was, I came in my life as a laborer. But once he came as a laborer, his role was over. He took me over to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit took over. Now I have become a laborer to somebody. 
but because i'm a laborer to somebody it doesn't mean that that person will be remaining under my custody that person now will become a laborer to somebody else because now the holy spirit has taken over the life of that person and now we are all directing ourselves directing everyone to christ and to the leadership of the holy spirit amen amen amen, amen. praise god praise god yes, that's why when we meet in church when we meet as brothers and sisters we are sharing the word with one another we are encouraging one another but we also are laborers to so many people out there who don't know christ so that we can even bring them into the kingdom we can attract them to christ by our own lives and also by you know sharing the good news and our own testimonies to others praise god praise god thank praise you jesus god. thank, thank you, jesus. you jesus thank you jesus praise god praise god praise god so anybody wants to share something sister joy sister caroline do you like to share something on this topic of hope and you know what really we learned today thank you so much sister marlene for that that was beautiful that was it's beautiful. very interesting it's very it practical correct practical <laughs> yes it's uh, because i'm a witness to that i was with marlene mm -hmm. and i at the beginning when i talked to this same girl one day she slept in my place she came with me to my house and she wanted to hide literally hide so what i was telling marlene is that uh, she's got some fear which you know actually first before taking her to god straight away let's solve her problem she's got a problem which is uh, worrying her she told me that i cannot tell you so i said why don't you tell the police then and ask for security because she would always or say cars are coming for her there's a drone following her there's a people are trailing her so i said why don't you ask for police protection then if you think like that because throughout the night she was talking to me and any car that came she'd say oh, my god they're following me that car's come for me one man was standing once we went to the laundry she said that man see that man there he he's following he's followed us and that man actually came to wash his clothes over there later i told her so, so basically she had a fear yeah. that was inside yeah, that was so, making her look around yeah. and think that you no, know no 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 she was, was involved in some illegal yeah. thing brother she mm. was because while talking to her i gathered that she was involved with a lot of uh, business with one guy and you know what happens when sometimes everything breaks up two people break up then you know you're you're in fear so fear had gripped her so i thought let's practically solve her problem so that that's why i used to tell mali uh, uh, she she's not ka have a mental she's a very clever girl she talks very very intelligently but she, even when it came to god she told me once no 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 see listen quietly she's tell me when mali was not around you know we have to be balanced too much i believe in god but when she said i believe in krishna i believe in this one i believe there's a god but you know then she was going little off so i said yeah i never told you that you haven't to be balanced okay but at the same time then i went back to malin and i said mali i think like this thing what malin is saying is so right that I hope I never thought of it the way she's thinking of it. Praise God. So, Praise God. Mm, now look at so, look at 2 Timothy yeah. 1:7. Look at 2 Timothy 1:7. It says That's a beautiful way. Of God looking. has not given us the spirit of fear, yes, but of power and of love. But and of in her mind. case, how are Someone. you going to how are you going to deal with it, brother? What would she's, you do if a person was uh, like she's not mental she's not got the devil on her she's practically she is in fear because there are people after her she is spirit yeah, of but that is the ruler of the earth so how can <laughs> I, how can we how can she accept the god right now the spirit of now? fear is the spirit mm. of satan satan is a spirit of fear so she is already having yeah. the devil who's going to beat her up because spirit of fear is the spirit of the enemy now the first thing when a person is having fear how do you deal with a person who's dealing with fear 
you need to bring them from a state of hopelessness, which was exactly what my sister Malin was sharing. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. The first yeah. thing that when a person That's is what in I'm fear, trying to see. a person is in hopeless state. So mm -hmm. how do you bring that person into hope? You bring that person into hope by teaching them, by showing them the love of God, showing them how much God loves them. Once they come into a stage of hope, once they come from a hopeless state that fear goes, now you go and tell them, listen, you have not been given a spirit of timidity. You have not having a spirit of fear, but you have a spirit of power. You have a spirit of love, that love that you have received from Christ. But uh, it's life. hard for her to accept that because straight away she's, she, she's hiding like, you know, she's... Yeah. So you don't, you, we don't, we don't look at what are things that are seen, but are unseen. And yeah. as you begin to intercede for her, as you begin to pray for her, as you begin to ask the Holy Spirit to work in her life and give her this scripture and tell her, thank you, Lord, that you have not given me the spirit of timidity. You have not given me the spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Remember, but correct. You know, my dear sisters, he, he, sisters, no, never give the power or of never love. counsel somebody no. True based love. on their condition. Remember Actually, always, you whenever have you're to counseling, show her love. With now, whenever love. you're counseling somebody, never deal with them on their physical level. Don't try to give a solution on a physical level. Always refer them back to the word of God. No, no, now, no, when a no. person is not going to listen to the word of God, a person cannot focus on the word yeah, of God. Yeah. What do you do at that time? At that time, you only bring that person from a stage of hopelessness to hope by continually feeding them the love of God. Continue yeah, that's what Marlon said just now. Mm, Continue what bringing Marlin. them from a hopeless stage to hope. Once they come to a stage of hope, which, which Sister Marlin shared today, now you begin to intercede for her and say, she doesn't, uh, Chelsea does not have the spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and sound mind. So, you and I, who, are, who have been given this case in order to minister to her, are praying the scriptures so that now that spirit of fear which is there, which, which was troubling her before, is being tortured, is being tormented by the spirit of God. And she's now having the, but having the spirit of power, love, and a summary. So, you know, every situation that we face, instead of focusing on the physical condition of focusing on the so if somebody is physically hungry, if somebody is on the road, very, very cold, and he's dying with the thing, so first thing you sustain him with physical thing, no? Food. Absolutely. Then only he can Absolutely. listen give to them, me. Give them warm clothing. Give them yeah. a Yeah, yeah. person can listen to you. What I'm give trying to the say. Love of God. Correct. Correct. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. Let's listen to her. But she won't confide when I told tell her tell me then what is the real truth. No, I can't tell. I cannot tell because I, I said tell the police. I cannot tell the police. If I tell the police, they'll finish me up. She said. So, so they, that's exactly you can't what help my sister Marlene did. She shared with her the word of God. That word of God began to you know you know began to you know sort of sustain her. Working. Sustain her. Yeah. Began to work in her. Then she hmm. finally came and apologized. Yeah. You know, this case study is so beautiful because, you know, it will help us. It, you know, as I'm listening to it, I also realize that I'm also learning something. You know, when whenever you are sharing with the word with somebody, if you're just sharing it, you know, without any commitment, you know, okay, if somebody comes, by the way, random way, I just shared some. You, this is a case where you can follow up with the person. You know the person where the person is staying. You have a contact number. You have a name for the person. You know you have been interacting with them. So you have to now ask the Holy Spirit to lead you step by step. It's not just like, you know, it's a casual encounter on the bus stop or somebody you met at the, at the train station. You just met them and they are gone away. This is a case where the Lord has put this person into your life. And if you follow the direction of the Holy Spirit, you are really living a life wherein you are in love with the Lord. He will use you mightily. He will use you in that same process to help that person. But the most important thing in this process is you also will learn. Amen. Life. You Amen. also will learn. You also will change. You also will grow. Because this will yes, help you to become that's patient. Very true. It will help very, you to very become more loving. It will help you to, you know, you begin to understand what people go through and just mm. make you more grateful to the Lord.
Amen. Praise God. That, that's exactly, brother, because it, the, when I was trying to talk to her, I would, I would go and study the Bible. That made me like closer to our Lord because unless I know him, how can I take him to her? And her, like, you know, absolutely. So absolutely. And as you begin to encounter that situation, you know, you want to go to the word, you want to be prepared, you want to ask the Holy Spirit, help me, Holy Spirit, how to counsel this case, how to deal with this case. And now you also are growing in your relationship with the Lord because your focus is that person, yes, but at the same time, you also are learning, you also are growing in, in your very relationship. Very true, very study. true, Mali. Very true. Unless what we you are study, doing. We don't know. Excellent. So it's like I said, you know, the first thing I wake up, it's 119147 from Psalm, I say, and I put my hope in the word. And throughout the day, I all these scriptures just come to me, like you know, if I have to just speak to him, and I and I tell people when people get annoyed or some, you know, they say what what is happening, and they call like I've got this, I've got COVID. I say death and life is in the power of tongue. If you say you've got COVID, you will have COVID. So it's it's like you know, people don't know that what how scripture helps them. It's what right. they say is what they get. Is what you sow is what you reap. Like what Amen. we would say. Amen. Very true. Very true. We need to be careful. We need to be careful. Absolutely. Beautiful. Beautiful Sister Mali. Thank you so much for sharing Thank that. You, Jesus. It was one case study, but I believe that even through this case study, we learned so much that, you know, when you see such a situation taking place, how we need to grow as well so that we keep abreast how we are going to counsel, how we are going to mentor, how we are going to you know, be that laborer for that person. And it's two people also learning. I'm learning. And also at the same time, that person also is getting fed. You're, you're, you're able to love more. You're growing in agape love. You're not looking on the other side, not looking at the rejection, not looking at, you know, she even slapping you or telling you to, complaining against you. But you are just looking at sharing the love of God. That's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Praise I want to say something, brother. Yes, Sister Angelique. Yeah, praise God. Hope is, uh, it's, a, it's a confidence of, a, of an expectation. Yeah. Longing for the promised blessings because we are the righteousness in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. So well said. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, it is. It's the imagination. Amen. Yes. Yeah, so when I had, remember I told you last time about my friend Maria, she's the same. Of course, she's Catholic and she's, she, I mean, she know she knows who God is and everything. But when she went, she's got into this depression of after teaching for 26 years and she was operating in fear and timidity. And I said, you're operating in unbelief. And then I, you know, I, when she came here, I keep talking to her over and over again. And I say, I keep telling her, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus mm -hmm. loves you. Mm -hmm. And you have to repeat that every minute of the day that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. And now, slowly, 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 she's getting out and doing things for herself. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Never like yes. to talk, Maria, mm -hmm. Jesus loves you. Jesus is hugging you. Jesus is embracing mm -hmm. you. You know, I keep I keep repeating that to her. And I even when she comes here, I physically hug and kiss her. And I keep saying, Jesus loves you. Do you yeah, know? Yeah, Jesus loves you is such a, uh, like a yeah. magic portion, you know? Oh, the depth. It is in, unimaginable and immeasurable of the love of God. Yes, you know? Console. Yes, so, mm. so much. So much. And that's why he hung on the cross, not for Christianity, for a religion, but for us. You know, he gave himself up for us so that yes. we have redemption of our sins. Crazy. And today, that love, love, love. By love. Grace. So, you know, I, I keep telling her all these things. And I said, the only way you can show that your identity and be boastful of your identity in Christ Jesus is when you say, I no matter what happens, Jesus loves me. Praise God. Praise, Praise God. You know, God. you know, Sister Angelique, what you just shared with me, shared with us right now about the love of God. You know, just this morning, I had a family of five people, three children, the husband and the wife. 
and yes. this man has been drinking he has lost his business you know the family is in, in a very bad shape and melni was counseling and we called them over to the house to them we just left after lunch you know just a short while ago before this class would begin and i was sharing with the husband the love of god as i was beginning to talk to him and i realized as he was as i asked him you know he said he lost his father when his mother just delivered him so he never saw his father yeah he lost his mother when he was 15 years old his elder brothers brought him up his grandmother brought him up so he never experienced the father's love he never experienced god's love and you know mm. this morning as i was sharing with him the love of god sharing with him you know what god did for him on the cross telling mm. him how now through jesus he becomes a son of the heavenly father how the heavenly father becomes his daddy right now you know what happened as i began to share with the husband and wife kept the children down and you know began to counsel to the uh, to the couple this man received the love of god and the love of god set him free from you know some pain that was having in his liver in his shoulders his wife was having a lump you know, on her shoulder having a lump you know the whole thing was frozen they were completely healed and set free the love of god came gushing into them because they never knew they they, they go to church they pray but they do everything but they yeah. never knew that this god loves them because only through the understanding of what happened on that cross that they began to understand exactly what you shared to your friend mari god loves you jesus loves you he became yeah. a substitute for us and you know that that understanding enabled this couple to receive god's love and they received god's love they received the healing love and that yeah. healing love they were so excited about they were crying like babies then we went and joined there with the other three children their children were in fear because the dad is to drink we got the whole family together we prayed with the whole family and then you know we we shared a meal with them and they left just about before the class could begin and you know it was such a joy to see this family all liberated and so excited as they left and now they are They, they want to know the word. They are they are excited about the word. Nobody ever told them about the word of God. But praise God! Now they've experienced the love of God. Now they've really understood what God's love really means. They are excited God. now to hear more and grow in their relationship with Jesus. Yeah, you know, brother, God's love is infinite. Exactly, you know? exactly. If we are so, if yes, God can for will definitely forgive us when we are ignorant. Yeah. but you will never forgive us when you operate in unbelief see the question is the question is not that he won't forgive you know even a person who knows the word of god can sometimes go into unbelief yeah but that Please. god take it to hell see the the point is just because you know the word of god does it mean that you won't go into unbelief still your your unbelief simply means you are you are a carnal person you are you are being dominated by your five senses it can happen to me also today but the question is just because i operate in unbelief for that quick moment the holy spirit will quickly come to my rescue and say what are you doing come on get out of that unbelief come on move to the word switch over to the word because yeah. we've got the help of the holy spirit he will yeah. help us to quickly renew our mind get out of that you know sense knowledge and get to the word and reach the finishing line yeah you know So, because she's a close friend of mine, brother, we we study together. So I keep <laughs> telling her she st she stays as uh, about fifteen minutes away from me. And I used to, I keep telling her I said when I come to visit you, I'll come with a long stick. And every time <laughs> I tap you, you have to say Jesus loves me. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> so you know now she's getting like you know. Sometimes you have to show tough love, as they say. With the stick, you need to go. <laughs> That's so sweet, Angelina. <laughs> So is nice. I like that. You know, pains us to see somebody like that. You know, pains. We we have come out of the pit, brother. We have come out of the pit. Praise God, and we want to bring us out of the pit. Yes. Oh, sweet that. And once you have been, you know, in that pit, and your God has taken you out of that pit, you can now be used by the Lord to take out people from their pits as well. Yeah, an instrument of God. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You know the way. Yes, God. But my, my, 
Nice sharing, Marlene. Thank you so much. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. All right. So, so my sister Caroline, would you like to do a closing prayer and end this session? Which our beautiful session, which our sister um, Marlene shared with us today. Let's let's do the session. Yes, but my throat is a bit hosey, so I may go a little so bit. As you enough. pray that prayer, your throat also will be fine. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. Thank you, brother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons, one God. We come into your sweet presence, Father oh. God. We praise you, we adore you, and we love you. And we come as one family. We came as one family, Father, to hear the word of God given to us by Sister Marlene. On, on hope. You are the God of hope who gives us joy and peace. And in your presence, O oh Lord, is fullness of joy and rest. And in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, cast your burdens onto our Lord Jesus and he will give you rest. And as in Colossians 1, Christ in us, the hope of glory. And so for, all we, for this, we praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen, amen. amen. Praise amen. God. Praise Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.